Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer. I'm your host, and with me today is Kevin Hansen from the Pixel Core. Hello. Welcome, Kevin. Glad to be here. So the reason I have Kevin in here today is um, I've had the opportunity to do a couple of jobs with DV Garage, which is where we shoot MacBreak Studio here in San Francisco. And a couple times I've worked, Kevin has been here. He's always here. It doesn't matter what time in the morning I come in or when I leave. He's here, and uh, he does a lot of compositing work, and in particular, one of the products he uses is a product from DV Garage itself called Conduit. And Conduit is a nodal compositor that works as a standalone, but it also works as a, as a plugin in Motion. And, you know, I love Motion, and I saw this thing, and I've, I've been familiar with Conduit over the years, but I saw Kevin using it in ways that I didn't really know you could do. And I thought it was worth talking a little bit about on this program because it's a great keyer and can kind of take keying to the next level from what you'd get with a more basic plugin with a few sliders. So I asked Kevin if he'd give a little demo of what you can do with Conduit in Motion. Glad to. Well, here we have a very simple key. It's a very easy key. So the Conduit script it would use would be very simple, just a few nodes. So, so Conduit's a filter in Motion, so you just get it from the filters? So we'll go to Filters, DV Garage, Conduit, Apply. Within filters, uh, we'll uh, open up the conduit editor. So it opens up this whole separate interface for motion to work with. In that editor is where you build your uh, node tree. So to do the basic composite, here's what we need. First, we need a color difference key. We'll need an invert node. Okay. So these nodes, if, if you've if ever seen Shake uh, or a few other applications, they use nodes instead of layers to, to build an effect. And it's kind of like building a little tree out of these things. So now we have the color difference key, an invert node, and a levels node. Okay. And from that, we get what looks like the start of a mat. So the color difference key is looking at the difference between the color channels to try to... Uh, identify the background from the foreground? There's some simple arithmetic going on. Uh, one channel minus another channel, maybe minus the average of a couple of other channels Okay. to get what you see here. Okay, and then that's inverted to the invert node, and the levels is just pushing things to white or to black? Right. So okay. at this point, we will take the black point and push the black point up, and take the white point and bring the white point down. Now we have uh, a black transparent background and a white opaque foreground. And that's the goal when you're creating a key like this is to create a map that has pure white, pure black in the background for transparency and pure white for the subject, right? But maybe with a little bit of shades of gray and the hair and edge detail? Well, you're right. The background should be completely black in most cases and the foreground should be opaque where you get transparency is all along the edges and that's where all the detail is. That's where all the hard work is. Correct. Okay. Le the last step is to apply the mat we just made to the raw image. To the image itself. Okay. To do that, we'll take the set mat node, the pre-multiply node, wire those up. So you just drag these little noodles out from each of those nodes to connect them. And tie the output of the pre-multiply node to the output. Okay. Now, you might be able to see the edges around her hair is tinted, are tinted green. That's uh, the semi-transparent pixels around the edges are picking up what's behind her, which is right. the green screen. So actually behind us right now, which you can't see, we have this very bright green screen, and that can be reflected back on us uh, or on any other subject. So how do we get rid of that? What I use most of the time is the unspill node. The unspill node will take a particular color that you, that, that you define and change it to another color that you define. Okay. To define that color, we'll take the output of the raw color difference key. Wherever the pixels are non-zero or not black, that tells the unspill node, this is where you want to change the colors. Okay. So the idea is to take something that's green and kind of neutralize that green, make it more of a gray, levels of gray? Well, you could make it gray. You could make it any color you any want. Color want. Okay. You could make it, say, the color of 
the foreground person, or maybe something that the color of something in the background, just whatever color you need to make it look integrated. And that's really the power of this kind of thing, because you may look at this and see like, wow, there's all these notes, this is a lot of stuff going on, and I just throw my color key on and I drag two sliders and I'm done. Why would I want to do so much stuff? But it really gives you a fine level of control on creating your key. So now you've got this, this background kind of gray and all the spill on her is that same color. Correct. So we'll take the output of the unspill node, replace the input of the set mat node, and there we have it. There is, so there is the foreground over the transparent background. If we go to the unspill node and bypass it, we can see the green fringe come back. So there it is bypassed. You see the green okay. fringe? Uh -huh. Unbypass it, green fringe gone. And if we, um, if we just hit, if I hit shift T, I don't know if it'll work with the filter open. I just want to look at the transparency of the background here. There, we can see that she's completely removed from, uh, from that background, right? Beautiful. Okay, so with several nodes, you're able to do that. Now, the thing is, Conduit can do much, much more than that, right? This is kind of just scratching the surface of what you're able to do with it? Right, this would, this is a relatively easy key, uh, where a nodal compositor, like conduit comes in is when things get tricky and you have to do something custom in order to solve whatever problems you have. Do you have a little example we could look at? One example might be what if there's a defect in the green screen? Maybe it's a shadow or it's a C stand or just something sitting back there. We like this crease in the green screen back there. Okay, so this shadow is from a crease in it, much darker than the rest of the green screen. And just using a traditional key, it might be difficult to get rid of that. Wow. So this one has quite a few nodes going on in it. At the bottom of the, uh, the, the tree, you see uh, the several nodes that we just built in the previous example. Right. The very simple key. Above it, there are uh, what is the clean plate um, tree. What we do is we take the raw green screen, There we go. The raw, the raw green. We take the raw green screen uh -huh. as it was captured on the set. The key to this, we also say at the end of the shooting session, grab a clean plate. Okay. So the talent leaves the, the talent set. Leaves. The camera doesn't move. Yeah. And you take a shot. Uh, take a shot of the the green screen. And that's the key is doing it right during production, so you've got something to work with afterwards. Correct. Okay. And just through some simple arithmetic, some divide, subtracts, a multiply, and an add. We go from the raw green screen mat, the green screen plate, to the corrected green screen plate. Ah, and now, so you've still got your green screen, but that crease is completely gone. Correct. Beautiful. Now we process as usual. As usual from there. Fantastic. So clearly this takes a little time to master. This is not a matter of a couple of sliders and you're done, right? I'm okay. still mastering. Okay. But there's quite a bit you can do with this. Yes. Very, very powerful product. So uh, Conduit is a product that is from DV Garage, uh, dvgarage.com. And uh, I think you want to mention something about some of your inspiration or teaching for doing this green screen positing from, uh, from uh, Stephen Wright. Is that correct? Well, the examples that we got that we're using here are from Steve Wright's book, Digital Compositing for Film and Video. Yeah. This is his second edition. His third edition is also out. OK, great book. I've got that. Digital, digital Compositing for Video, Film and Video, right? Correct. Fantastic. So Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.